them out here. Oh, yes. This room is about 4,600 square feet. And so that's actually a little bit over double the size of this room. So just as an idea of, of how big a room it is. Um, so then if you go back out into the foyer and go to the right this time, you come through the doors and you come into the fellowship hall. And as you can see, you look across, you'll see the, the uh, windows that will go into the teen room and uh, lots of, of natural light coming in from the windows that will look out towards the mountains. You go to the other side of the room and look back across the chairs. Uh, you're looking into the kitchen area um, and of course the main entrance where you come in. The layout here shows uh, tables and chairs for about 340 people and this was supposed to be a maximum of about 350 or somewhere in that range. But even with this many tables and chairs, um, there's actually quite a bit of room between the tables and room, room around the outside of the, of the different areas. You go back out into the entry and go the other direction, you're going out over past the office. Um, this is situated so that you know it has good access for the congregation again. Um, be really open, won't be closed off in, in any way. The, the area is actually, and we've talked about this before, but it's set up so that it can be locked and kept secure and private from the rest of the building. Uh, so if someone's there working alone, they won't have to worry about uh, what's going on in the rest of the building. But at the same time, because the front door here will be the public access during the week, um, you can control traffic and people won't be coming into the building and wandering around with no one knowing that they're there. So then from the office, you, you go into the, the main uh, classroom aisle here. Um, this starts again, the, the first classroom that you, you come around will be the ladies classroom and this is a pretty good sized room. It's actually almost as big as the fellowship hall that we have now. And so um, we're kind of hoping that there'll be room at least for quite a while to have a small group or nursing mothers area in the back, maybe a little uh, a couch and, and a chair and that sort of thing and still have lots of room for a, a big class. Um, and then of course it's located adjacent to the younger kids classes. You have the cradle roll in the preschool right here and the bathroom there is set up with, with a uh, adult sized toilet as well as a small toilet is one of the big things in preschool is of course uh, potty training and uh, learning that sort of thing and then the next classroom would be kindergarten first grade and then just on around um, in the back oh this is kind of an example of the classroom size these are six foot tables so there's there's six tables there and 18 chairs and um, so there you know there'll be room for more students but 18 20 students in a class is getting pretty pretty good sized go into the back wing then uh, we have the Bible Valley Bible Institute there in the corner in a little bit bigger room and you go across with the teen room on this side the teen room is about 1400 square feet so it'll be a really really big room that be can be used for the teens as well as for a you know adult class that sort of thing uh, and then of course we have a secondary restroom area that's back there in that corner And that brings us to the kitchen. The idea behind the kitchen design really is, is kind of have like two separate spaces to have a public area that's, that's what you see here towards the front and then to have a um, more of a commercial cooking uh, area in the back with kind of a shared area for preparation as well as cleanup in the middle. Um, you know this front area will have a refrigerator for communion materials 
We have our all-important drink center and coffee machines right there on the corner, easily accessible uh, for everyone. Spaces for, you know, cleanup, a hand-washing sink, as well as countertops for crock pots, plug-in, that sort of thing. Have warming ovens over on this side, have island space um, for whatever is needed, and, and serving areas there along the front. Um, you know, whether this will be a, enough, you know, to, to actually serve us a full, you know, potluck dinner, we'll probably end up with some tables still, but at least it should be um, pretty handy. Do I want a pointer? I could try that. I don't Sometimes I'm technically challenged with these sort of things, but I'll try not to shoot anybody in the eye. Oh, and the other thing then is that you have this area right here for trash collection with direct access to the dumpster. So when you're you know, if you're taking out the trash, you can come right in here and go right through without uh, getting right in the middle of all the other traffic that's going on. As we move to the back of the kitchen, you can see here this, this, well, I went too far. Yeah. This is the, the cleanup area that I was talking about. So you have a, a commercial three compartment sink. You have a rinse area place to stack dishes, a dishwasher underneath here, um, and then, you know, prep area here. These are fridge and storage. There'll be storage along the wall over here, too. Um, then in this area, it would be more of the dedicated food preparation area. Uh, lots of uh, stovetop area, uh, more ovens, um, probably going to end up with some kind of a, of a fancy hood requirement from the fire marshal, and so that would be back here. Um, and then just storage on the walls and that sort of thing. Yes? Like a, or a like a caterer or, or, or something like that. I don't know what the requirements to get I think you're certified, but wasn't that part of the function of it as well? It was one of the things that, that we've considered, but it, it never was a you know, like a really uh, um, direct goal. The problem is that it seems like as you get into uh, a lot more expenses when you try to go completely that route. Um, so, you know, for this first phase, the, the main thing that goes in is having, you know, the drains in the right place, um, in the concrete floor for the sinks and, and this sort of thing, and having the, the gas lines and, and all of that that will be in the concrete, um, you know, getting all that in. and so. You know, as we go to the second phase, we'll have some more opportunity to, you know, readdress this. And of course, it all depends upon, you know, what our, our finances are and, and how things are looking in that regard. Any other questions? Yes? Where's the janitorial closet? Okay, the janitorial closet is, is back right off the foyer. Um, we have, actually have two, you can see here. This would be the main, the main front one right here. And then we would have another one up here in the back corner. Yes, Tapina. Oh, okay. And um, would this be something that we can use for the community? I'm wondering if it's rentable or because there's nothing out there in Wasilla. I mean, it would be great for an outreach. And so, my question is are 
we going to get this like certified commercial just so in case other groups may want to use it for weddings or for other uh, events? It's a, it's a good question. I mean, I don't. We haven't actually ad addressed it. I mean, I suppose there's some consideration as to whether you know that's something the church wants to get involved with because it almost gets into a business type of arrangement. But uh, it's certainly something we can explore further as we go along. Let's see. So anyway, that's that's basically that's basically the tour. Um, I guess I didn't say anything, but the the food pantry, of course, will be right here, so it will be readily accessible from the outside. Um, yeah, that's about it. Any other questions? Any comments? Okay. Mechanical room has actually ended up being on the second floor. This will be the main access with some mechanical components uh, in this room. And then the, the second floor room is actually goes about from this wall to this wall and is about that size. And... Um, Well, the, it's two-story, it's, it's 18 foot sidewall from this wall clear to the back wall. <coughs> and so that's why there's room back there. And that was basically something that the contractor required. They just needed the space for, for their equipment, for the mechanical equipment. The whole building will actually have in-floor heat. And so we'll have a nice even heat and then There'll also be a ventilation system to go along with that to exchange the air so we don't get into a situations where we have a lot of uh, heat buildup like this room experiences. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure that that will have to be addressed. Yeah. Taken care of. Any other questions? Tiffany? Yes, Tira? Mm -hmm. Exit there. It'd be nice to put like some windows into the tea room so it's not just like this dead end of the straight corridor. And just, you know, sometimes. <laughs> or, you know, or else put the hallway, you know, in between the tea room and the fellowship hall or something. It, it looks like just kind of a, I don't know, a dead end, unused place that. Well, it's, it's, it's there as part of the fire escape, you know, uh, requirements. Well, I think she's saying windows into it so that yeah, it so avoids the possibility of teens getting into mischief. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That it's exposed and kind of more open, like, so that, yeah, you don't feel like you could do something. Yeah, it will have, it'll have windows on this side or they're already planned in this wall uh, but this but you're talking about over here in this wall mm-hmm yeah Yes, yeah, there'll be, there'll be glass of some kind in these doors. Yes.
one of the things that's worked out is because the whole air the whole building has a sprinkler system in it you get away from actually having to have those being fire doors you know like over here uh, you know there, there's no need for doors or, or anything like that and uh, so that kind of keeps it more open yes Where is bathrooms area in this kind of stuff? I don't see it for well the main bathroom area is down here okay and this would be the women's and this would be the men's with drinking fountains out here and then the secondary bathroom would be up here um, this would be the men's here uh, the women's here and they both you know all all of the rooms have really good handicap stalls um, and then this is actually the would be like the uh, um, dressing rooms for the baptistry and this room will have a shower a curbless shower set up and then this would just be a, um, a dressing room with a sink this restroom here is set up as a family restroom and it will actually have an adult size changing table in it and that's just to um, you know make a convenient place for for all kinds of different people to uh, to use right there our custodial closets will have utility sinks as well as mop sinks um, the room here will have a changing table in the cradle roll with a sink and then have a high and a low sink in the preschool classroom and then of course the uh, office will have its own restroom here yes there is again that uh, baptized place pool yeah that's that's right here in the corner yes yeah, so you go up the stairs there and in then back down the stairs into the baptistry there mm-hmm You guys aren't very talkative. Yes, Stefina. Is there any space that we can add on so that as we, as a community, are out there shining that it's going to get a lot of Well, I think, you know, from, yeah. from what the elders have said and the discussions that's, you know, gone on, one of the things in, in sizing this building like this was that you know once the congregation got to this size then it was time to expand but in other areas to go to Palmer to go to um, Willow to go to Eagle River and um, and so we haven't really made allowances to add on add on to the building it seems like you get into making lots of compromises trying to do that and then kind of like we've ended up here where um, you know we could have we could have added on to the auditorium here but then all of the other spaces the support spaces that go along with it are still too small and and so in the end it didn't it doesn't really work out that way yes tefina where are we going to put a sign at <laughs> who who's who's concerned about signs i mean <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, this will be the the main street side, and so I think we'll probably be able to put a sign out there. Um, I mean, that's actually one of the things that's going along with the site development is that we're this this was originally rural residential, and then rural residential zoning the signs that you're allowed are pretty small and so we're in the process of trying to get it switched over to commercial which would allow us quite a bit bigger uh, uh, signage and um, given the location and everything that that's that's really something that's needed uh oh <laughs> um. Any other any other questions? Any other comments?
I've kind of felt like that, you know, that the, this part of it has gone really well. I mean, the, our contractor has been really sensitive to our our desires and our needs, um, and of course, we've had it kind of locked in for quite a while, and so that's that's really helped us. Um, I think in, in dealing with him, the the site plan and the the parking and everything and dealing with the city is probably the only real hang up right now. Um, they actually have some pretty strict requirements. I think it's in a Title 16 or something. It's a packet that's you know pretty thick, and um, so right now, once the contractor actually submits that that um, application to the city, it'll be 14 days minimum from that time until they can actually issue us a permit. And that's because they have, it has to go out to the public uh, for uh, comment. And so it's, it's starting to put us really close. You know, originally the contractor had said that if he couldn't get started by about the middle of August with the dirt work that we were going to you know, get too late in the season. Um, I think our, our general feeling now is that even if we get later than that, you know, we want, we want to start something. We want them up there at least starting the initial dirt work, um, you know, and, and even to lock in our price that he's given us this, this summer, you know, we may be spending some of the money that we have just sitting in the bank to buy materials and and that sort of thing um, to make sure that when we do get the chance to go that we can actually uh, go and, and still maintain the same deal that we have now. Yes, Barry. The rooms are pretty are pretty good sized. We we've considered, you know, putting in a movable wall here um, because this is such a big a big room and you could easily split it into two to make smaller rooms. Um, you know, we, we still have the auditorium for a classroom. We still have the fellowship hall for a classroom. And so as far as these walls go, we haven't really, you know, talked about it. I mean, like this wall here, is, of course, is a bearing wall, and so is this. And so the only one that you could do that with would be this one. Um, these, these classrooms are just a little bit smaller than these. But just as an example, the, the current high school room, which is our biggest classroom here, is 444 square feet. And so the standard classroom over here is 465 square feet. And these back here are actually in the 400 square foot air, uh, range. So they're actually pretty good sized rooms compared to what we're we're used to. Were you saying like, like 18 people in a room? Well, that one picture that I had was, was what it would look like with um, with 18 people in it. And that's the average room size? And that's pretty much the average room size, yeah. So if you put, I mean, you could actually put two eight foot tables in and still have room to get by. You know, you could you could easily probably get 20, 25 students. So you're getting into really big class size. You get into that. So you'd have to have three teachers. Oh. <laughs> It'd be a terrible, terrible situation to be in to have such big classes. Huh? Yes.
Yeah. 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 It, it's something that we've talked about, you know, from a contractor's point of view, it gets really dicey because of the liability issues and one thing or another. I mean, we're, we'd almost be to the point where we would have to um, self-contract certain parts of it ourselves if we wanted to do that and exclude, exclude the contractor entirely. And we do, and there is the possibility that we, that we can do that. Um, Yes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And we're, we're definitely going to be in a position where, you know, we're going to want to maximize our talents. That's that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So let's we'll start posting lists. <laughs> um, I I really look forward to to that time when we can be working on that part of it, be inside of it, and and uh, be thinking about paint colors. Yes, Tapina. Oh, no, I didn't really. It's. Mm. In this picture here, I, I've kind of attempted to draw in some of what um, the acoustical engineer that we're working with has, has talked about. Um, there was actually a couple things early on that he wanted. One of them was, of course, the, the basic shape of the auditorium. A rectangle is always sounds better than a square, and especially if uh, you know, you want to be at the long end of the rectangle. The other thing that he wanted was he wanted the slope ceiling. Originally, we had talked about just cost-wise to just have a flat ceiling, but having uh, parallel surfaces like that causes you some trouble sound-wise, and so um, we've gone to the slope ceiling. And then eventually we'll have some um, round shapes like this on the walls, and again, that will be all part of his plan to uh, give us the best possible acoustics that we can that we can have. It's one of those things that you you don't really think about beforehand, but you know a, a great sound system can't overcome bad acoustics in a room. I mean, it just doesn't it doesn't work. And and you may not really think about acoustics as being a big deal, but you know if you even, even like in this room, if you have trouble listening, if you have trouble hearing, um, even if your hearing's good, sometimes you have trouble hearing. And that just causes you some, some issues. And, and one of the things, I mean, it's kind of funny to say, but one of the things that leads to is actually you feel like you want to fall asleep. I mean, we thought it was the preacher, but see, it's not. It's just the room acoustics. <laughs> and so that's one of the reasons that we've you know, tried to put as much thought into that as we possibly can. Yes? Yeah, it's, it all ends up being artificial lighting. Yeah. You know, we had, originally we kind of thought, you know, we might try to figure out some way to get windows in the back so um, the building kind of got rotated so that that's not the view side any, anymore anyway. Uh, but um, by the time you put the building into the center of the room or the center of the building, you just kind of get away from, from all of that. So, yes? Right, right. Yeah, the, um, 
this upper area here is, is going to be where the AV room is. Um, and that's where they'll be doing the filming from and have their computers and, and all their equipment. Yes, Tafina? Yeah. Yes, yes. And that's one of the nice things about our current technology is that so much of it's become wireless that you can you can add things like that, um, you know, without having a lot of infrastructure in the building. Um, one of the things that we will have would be, you know, and this goes to your talking about the TV in the other room is is basically having a a wired in data system. Um, so that you know you can you could plug a TV in about anywhere that you know and be able to see what they're filming or, or something to that to that effect and again that's something that the, the new technology that's coming out is pretty cool with yes Well, it's still kind of up in the air because one of the, the nicest things is having an overhead projector, you know, having this projector but having it up on the, on the ceiling and then having the connections wired so that you can uh, hook up to it, you know, real easily. And, uh, pardon? Because it's going to be a feed through. Yeah, it's going to be a, a right, yeah. So it'd have to be, you know, situated in such a way to deal with that, but then you know you have a you have a pretty big area there that you'll be able to put a screen on, that sort of thing. Tafina. One more question. Um, what about like when we used to have the sojourners and um, maybe the lectureship? Will we have outside outlets and things like that for for toddlers? Yeah, yeah. There's there's plans to put things like that in. Probably not full hookups with sewer and everything, but at least some electricity and and uh, water, access to water. Yeah. Yes. One more question: How they go supply water? City water, or they go drill down to the? We have city water here. City water and sewer, and we have gas, natural gas. Um, so we have all the utilities that are in the in the street there. Yes. Okay. So just as a reminder here. Yes, Gary. Yes. <laughs> Pardon? Took care of that. Yeah. Mm. Um, this is what we're, you know, the, the proposal that we're working under. Uh, the first phase, which was the, the basic exterior shell, but included quite an extensive list of, of different you know things I mean it would include uh, you know the interior partitions all of the in-floor heat um, just no you know no electrical no insulation no uh, in the wall plumbing that sort of thing all that comes in second phase and of course no no landscaping or paving so right now we're we're looking at needing um, 1,325,000 to finish this phase of, of construction. So right now, our building fund is, I should, ask, I should have asked Chuck earlier exactly what it was, but I didn't. It's a little higher than this? Okay. So we're at roughly 1,080,000. Uh, we have our land free and clear. We have our building plans completed. We have the site plan under development. We don't actually have any construction yet, unfortunately. 
We need $255,000 to finish this first phase. And of course, we still need the $1,375,000 to finish the second phase, plus the money for the parking and landscaping. So that kind of brings us to the second part of what I would like to talk about. What happened? Yes. No, they really, they really haven't. Um, you know, I think we've, we've kind of generally understood that if we didn't get started on it fairly quickly, that it would end up being renegotiated somewhat, just because prices will go up. And, and uh, the longer that that, you know, interim period is, um, the more that that will change. Of course, you know, once, once we get the shell up, and this is why it's been so important to get the shell up, we're not, we're not faced with a point where we have to come up with all of the money to start the second phase. I mean, we can actually start doing things along as we get the money to do them. And so that will, you know, help. Anything else? So how did that come? Oh well. <laughs> um, um, so now we're kind of at the point where I need to talk about the finances. You know, I just want you to, to uh, you know, keep in mind that, that this is really a family discussion. And, and I just ask that you, you know, as you consider this, that you be as gentle and, and loving with each other and especially with me as you can be. Um, one, of the, one of the real strengths I think of our congregation is that we don't go around drawing lines in the sand where God doesn't draw them. Um, and, I don't think, and I think we do this because of the way that we value unity. I mean, we, we actually have quite a range of people that attend here that, that, that within the context of the Bible have a lot of different opinions about things and that we can meet together is, is a great thing. And, and the reason I kind of say that is that, you know, ultimately this is just a building. I mean, it's a, it's a tool. It's, it's a big expensive tool to be sure, but I don't think it's, re it's overdone. I don't think it's an extravagant. I mean, I, I feel like every, you know, square foot of the building has been discussed and, you know, somebody has a claim to it and actually multiple people have claims to, to the same, you know, square footage. And so I think overall that, you know, we're, what we've got here is probably the, you know, the, the best deal by far that we could ever hope to have. It's just that, you know, we're at a point as a family where we need, we need more room. I mean, families run into that. Families grow, families want bigger houses, need bigger houses, and that's, and that's where we're at. Um, in the past, we've, you know, we've debated all of the different alternatives almost endlessly, and we're actually now at a point where the elders have set us a direction. And, um, and really, it's up to us now to figure out how to make that work, how to get it done. But seeing when we last left off fundraising efforts, we'd kind of gotten to the point where we had a lot of money in the bank. We didn't have enough to do everything, obviously, but we had a lot of money in the bank. And I think that in a lot of ways, the general feeling was there wasn't any point in giving more and going forward with, with more and more do donations until we actually figured out what we were gonna do and actually got at least a good part of the million dollars that we already had spent. And, um, and, and so that's kind of where we left off. And, you know, and I don't think that that, that that leaves us in any way, shape, or form in a bad position now. Um, you know, I know when I'm out in the valley and talking to, to different groups or different people, there's a lot of congregations in the valley who are trying to build new buildings. And when they find out the position that we're in financially, they're actually pretty envious. There's, 
There's a lot of congregations that are even part of national organizations that don't even own the building that they're in. I mean, that they're making payments on it as they go. Um, they don't own the land that they want to build on, and they certainly don't have the money in the bank that we do. Uh, you know, I, I, I think that even from a, just an individual family point of view, if you, if you were thinking about building a bigger house and you had the land to build on and you had over a third of the money saved to build, you you would go for it. I mean, that would you know that's just kind of the American way. You'd go borrow the money or you'd do whatever it took um, to get that done. But of course, you know that's where the reality kind of kicks in, is that you can have all this going for you and you still have to figure out how to pay for what you're going to borrow or what you're going to spend that you don't have. Um, so as you all know, you know part of the plan really is to, is to sell this building to pay for a large part of the new building. You know, just when it will sell and how much is still pretty much up in the air. We've start, started the appraisal process, but that really won't be done until late September. So where does that leave us? Well, in the short term, we need $255,000 to pay for the final phase, or the end of the first phase of construction. Now, I think you probably heard the elders have started the process of applying for a loan. But the important thing to remember here is that's just a backup plan. Um, the loan isn't the main plan. You know, the, because the thing you have to remember is that loans are expensive. The interest is expensive. I mean, as, a, as individuals right now, we can borrow money for under 4% if we're borrowing against our, our houses and our property. But as a group, we're looking at 7% because we're in a commercial loan um, type of deal. So the main plan to pay for this is that all of us you know, before this first phase is, is over with, all of us together donate the money to pay for it. That's the main plan. You know, to take that out as far as it, as it goes, the plan is that in order to finish the building, we will have to donate the money to do that. That's the plan. Um, course you know we'll, don we'll donate whatever this building you know doesn't doesn't cover you know as you as you think about this and as you th as you consider it I think you have to ask the question and that is that has God ever had any other plan I mean when you look at the Bible and you look at the way things have been done it seems like to me that the only way things were ever done were by you know free will offerings from from the family of God with his with his blessing with his help anybody have any comments the stage I mean I think it's something that we've all we, we know we've known this all along it's just it seemed like to me that we've kind of talked around it and not really just, you know, got right to the to the point of it. So, one of the reasons that you know this comes up now, of course, is because we are facing the start of construction. We are, you know, starting to spend the money that we have. Uh, one way or another, like I said, we're going to start some dirt work this year. And so one of the first things that comes up in Alaska in the fall is that the dividend is coming. You know, for Marlene and I, the dividends aren't a huge thing right now, but I, I remember a time when, you know, to get $2,000 would have been a third as much income as, as we would have for the whole year. I mean, it would have been a really, you know, a really huge a uh, huge thing for us. And so, you know, I know that, that these checks are a big thing for people. 
for a lot of people. And it's just that, you know, this building is a big thing too. It's a, it's a, it's a big deal for our future. It's, it's something that will, you know, as we go into the future, um, will be a, a great tool for God's work here in the valley. And so, you know, just, just thinking along that lines, you know, it's, it's like you run the numbers. If a hundred of us give a thousand dollars, that's a hundred thousand dollars. And, you know, just take that on down. You know, if, if a hundred give fifteen hundred and another hundred give a thousand, you've got two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and we've met our goal. And it's easy to say, harder to do. But that's, that's what we come down to. I mean, we, we come down to, as families and as individuals of trying to figure out how we're going to, to donate that kind of money to the church. It, it's, a, it's, a new, it's kind of a new thing. I mean, even, even for me, as long as I've been in the church, I've never really been in the position where I needed to donate relatively large chunks of money to the church. I mean, it just isn't something that I've ever done. It's a, it's a new experience. In a lot of ways, it's intimidating to think about. All of a sudden, you know, somehow or another, my, my family finances are going to adjust to allow me to, to do this. And on our own, it's not going to happen. But somehow or another, through faith, it, it can happen. And so, you know, in the end, for, for me, it's just something that, that I can face only because, you know, it's, it's God's gift to me. That faith and that courage is something that, that I get from Him. So, that's all I got. Anybody have any more comments? Well, thank you all for for coming. Thank you.